The Seagull, a play by Russian dramatist Anton Chekhov, first opened in St. Petersburg in 1896. The first act opens with Konstantin Treplev, who kills a seagull and places it at the feet of Nina, a beautiful young actor with whom he is hopelessly in love. He tells her that if she does not love him, he too will lie dead at her feet. However, Nina is not in love with Konstantin. Her heart belongs to Trigorin, a famous novelist, who in turn is in love with Irina Arkadina, an actor as well as Konstantin's mother. Constantine despises Trigorin, believing his writing to be empty and meaningless, an entirely different type of work than Constantine himself hopes to produce. Constantine aspires to create new and more expressive literary forms. He has already written a play that Nina has agreed to star in. The performance is staged outside on the estate of Constantine's uncle, Pieter Sorin. The play is put on to a lukewarm reception, although the audience acknowledges that it certainly has literary merit. Madame Arkadina and Trigorin are present in the audience, though they refuse to take the production seriously. Trigorin only finds merit in Nina's portrayal of the lead role. Madame Arkadina's behavior at her son's play is indicative of her attitude in every aspect of their relationship. She is a famous actor, one whose career depends on preserving her youth and good looks, which results in her being resentful of the reminder that she is the mother of a 25-year-old man. Because of this, she tries as much as possible to keep Constantine in the country and out of the public eye, where he may be associated with her. She gives him little to no spending money, so that he is forced to wear the same suit until it is almost threadbare. Her brother, Pieter Sorin, criticizes her about the treatment of her son, which she responds to by claiming that she is herself in poverty, although in reality she simply prefers to spend her money on herself. In spite of the way she treats him, Constantine remains very attached to his mother, which causes him to develop a morbid fascination with his work and life in general. Every so often, he loses his temper and he and his mother get in terrible arguments. As soon as they begin to fight, his mother bursts into tears that make Constantine feel bad for upsetting her. Meanwhile, Masha, the daughter of Pieter Sorin's manager, is hopelessly in love with Constantine, just as much as he is in love with Nina. She is a young girl who dresses only in black, claiming that she is in mourning for her chronic unhappiness. The love entanglement continues as the schoolmaster, Semyon Medvedenko, is in love with Masha, but he has only 23 rubles a month on which he needs to support his mother and his two sisters, as well as his brother. However, after two years, Masha gives up all hope that Constantine will notice her, and so agrees to marry Semyon. Together they have a child, but Masha is so indifferent to it that the responsibility of its care falls to Semyon, on top of all of his other responsibilities. Many people offer Constantine their opinion on what he should write about and how he should write. One of his main advisors is the local doctor, Yevgeny Dorn, who has never written a line in his life, yet feels perfectly qualified to give Constantine advice. He believes that Constantine spends too much time worrying about literary form, and that literature is not about form, but rather spontaneous ideas. Pieter Sorin is also at the ready with suggestions for his nephew's writing, and tells him that he should write a story called The Man Who Wished, based on Sorin's own life. He tells his nephew that when he was young his dream was to become an author, but he never made it happen. He then decided to become an orator, but his speech was abominable. He also had the desire to marry, but that never happened either. Trigrin expresses his own views on writing as he is taking note of Masha's neurotic personal habits. Nina interrupts him, stating that the writer's life must be a very fascinating one. Trigrin counters this thought by telling her that writing is merely a violent obsession that takes hold of a man and forces him onto a treadmill from which there is no escape. The writer of fiction is compelled, almost against his will, to utilize every detail from his life toward his next story. Even the seagull that was killed by Constantine is suitable material on which to build a narrative, according to Trigorin, who begins to see Nina as a seagull and himself as a hunter. She ends up agreeing to run away from home to join him in Moscow as his mistress. Things start to go downhill after she has a child that dies, and her acting career proves unsuccessful. Trigorin deserts her. All the while, Constantine attempts to convince her to live with him, but she continues to refuse, taking work with a second-rate repertory company. Her suffering leads her to the realization that succeeding in any artistic pursuit is about perseverance above all else. Constantine does not possess the same inner strength as Nina, and when she leaves his life seemingly forever, he is distraught and commits suicide. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.